Your coastal news top stories this week. Discharged patient meets an unlucky end. Surgeon tries to make amends. A murder victim's phone discovered in car. Hello, this is Coastal News, an unofficial home and away podcast where we dissect the latest episodes and discuss the happenings and residents of our favourite fictional town, Summer Bay. Well, Rachel, how unlucky can you be? Um, we, we saw at the beginning of the week, Rachel gets her halo taken off and um, there's a bit of a nice moment between her and Christian, I suppose, where, you know, they sort of, there was a bit of a misunderstanding, you know, really sorry, you know, let's be friends. I've met a real good person in you. Um, likewise, yada, yada, yada. And she leaves the hospital for one last walk along the beach now. We all know in Summer Bay that is recipe for disaster. And of course it was. After all that, she survived. <laughs> it's quite funny, really. She survives, um, you know, the skydive accident. Her head detaches from her spine. She spends all these weeks recovering. Managing and is now miraculously running around. And crossing a road is what um, gets her in the end. Just honestly... What were the writers thinking? I just found the whole thing comical. Um, so Rachel has sadly passed, hit by a car, hit and run, um, and yeah, it was all really not really worthwhile. Um, and I'm being quite jovial about it because we don't actually care about this this character, do we? She she's a plot device for the whole Torian issue, Christian and Torian. Will they? Won't they? Sort of. Just it, she was a dead toy with their story arc, so we we don't know anything about her. We're not invested in her as a character. She is quite, you know, dispensable in that respect. So her death really didn't affect us too much. Um, but of course, then it has sort of kicked Christian and Tori's story now into the next phase where he, um, you know, is as as sort of woken up to this realization of what he's been like. And let me tell you, I'm not buying it one bit. I think regular listeners will know I've I've had it with Christian and the way he's been with Tori. Tori's one of my favourites. I'm really not happy about the treatment he has given her. And, you know, Tori girl, get rid. And she did. And I was happy. And it looks like the second Rachel's out of the picture, he's decided that he's been a bit of a twonk. And he's back. And he's, you know, sniffing around Tori again pretty much instantly. He looked really, really upset about Rachel. And then literally the next scene I saw him, he's like, oh, you want to go out for dinner, Tori? You know, I was like, oh, please. I can't be the only one that thinks like this, guys, right? Um, I think Tori is, you know, is going to cause herself a world of pain if she goes down that route. And it looks like she probably will go down that route. She seems to be, you know, head over heels for him and... You know, it will probably work. Um, and, you know, this sort of ties in with, with Justin's story, really, this week. Because Justin's, he's also come to that realisation, hasn't he? That he's an addict. He's said it out loud. He's admitted it. He wants to get off these painkillers now. So he's gone cold turkey and he wants to do it at home. And under duress, Tory... Um, and Leah under a little less dress, but Tori definitely under dress has as sort of agreed to let him do it at the house. And obviously Christian comes over and, you know, he's oh, I'll offer some help. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll I'll give you some help and while while Justin's going cold turkey and, you know, sort of ends up back in the good books of Tori and I'm I'm literally screaming at the T V like get him out you know well, there we go, there we go. I just, I was, I was actually sat there thinking, bloody hell, Rachel's body isn't even cold. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and 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 when Tori actually, she called him out on it. She she did say, you know, I've got to think about Grace as well. You know, you sidelined us for another woman at the end of the day. And I thought, I'm glad you said that, but you you know, you need to take some of your own advice here, Tori. Um, 
<laughs> and obviously Justin's really she uh, focus on Justin, right? If you're gonna help him, and he's you know he, he needs he need I think he needs that that focus. I'm still not sure whether to believe Justin at this. You know, is he serious about going to counselling and and getting all the help he needs, not just locking himself in the bathroom? You know. Um, or is he just giving everybody lip service? Is what they want to hear, especially where Leah's concerned. Because, you know, he did it to me. That scene in the diner, it just felt like he, he was just sort of saying, yeah, yeah, I'll go to a council, I'll go to a meeting in Yabby Creek. You know, it, it, you know, it, is he going to go? You know, seriously, is, is he going to take it seriously? I'm at the point where, after all these months of all this going on, I don't believe he, he will. He had a really nice scene with Irene, though, obviously, who's very adverse to addictions and whatnot. Um, you know, it was a lovely... She gave him some great advice, you know. There's going to be times where you're going to you're gonna fall down, but you've just got to pick yourself up and you've got to carry on. So, no, I really liked that. I, you know, I, th I thought that was great advice and a, and a lovely scene. Um, the jury's out for me about whether Justin... Um, we'll get well. well. I suppose we'll see as the episodes unfold, um, and and the jury's out as well on Christian because well, it's not really. You know, I've made my mind up about him. But there we go. I know a lot of people are fans of Torian. Um, you know, so by all means, share your thoughts with me. But I'm just just not feeling it. We know Justin didn't make it to the um, the counselling session, though, don't we? Hmm? And he didn't make it. Why? Because a phone was found in his car. Not any phone. Apparently, it's Susie's phone. Now, this phone's bothering me, and I know it's bothering others as well. The phone is in the right state. Have you seen it? Right? This is apparently Susie's phone. Susie ran over her phone with her car. So... This, I mean, looking at the state of it, this can't be the phone that was texting John pretending to be Susie. So, if it is, I'd be very, 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 very I mean, you know, what what phone is it? We all need one of those if it survives that and then is able to still start texting John. Um, but, so there's a burner phone somewhere that someone's using pretending to be Susie. So, is this that burner phone that's been planted which is what I thought at first. And I thought that makes sense. But actually, as the episodes unfolded, it seemed to be that the phone is actually Susie's that's been turned on. It's been charged and turned on. Okay, right. So it's it's, it's working. Um, but but if it is that phone, one, how has it gone from the side of the road being run over to in someone's possession to then be able to be planted, like two months later? Was somebody watching Susie as she left town there? And drove over the phone and then went and collected it. Well, you know, has someone just been really, really lucky and come across it? Um, Realised it was Susie's, kept hold of it all this time. Didn't, you know, bin it or report it or anything. And decided to plant it on Justin later on. Or, it, it, you know, is it Justin? Did Justin do something to Susie after she left town there? Knew the phone was there and went back for it. I think all these... All these are really implausible. So the phone is bothering me quite a lot. Um, there's a lot of questions about it. I don't know if we're supposed to just roll with it. Um, but it's important when you're trying to investigate a murder <laughs> as a viewer. Um, you know, uh, and who who would have access to Justin's car? Okay. Um, you know, Justin passed out, didn't he, behind the wheel? Because we, we thought for a moment it was Justin who ran over run over Rachel, so, but he'd passed out. So is that the moment when it was planted? Did this weird, this really weird detective, Amy Peters or whatever she's called, did she plant it while she was searching his car? I don't know. To be honest, I'm still sticking with my prime suspect, Dodgy Steve-O. Hashtag Dodgy Steve-O. Um, he, he's just making things way too obvious. He's stirring the pot too much. He's obviously sort of... in. I don't know if it's because I think he's done it, but he's to me he's been really obvious in his accusations to other people, to particularly Justin. It seems to be 
and and being as though Justin is now be the one that's being arrested and being questioned and 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 is the one that Aim is gunning for clearly, um, it just seems to me a little too obvious to be anybody else, or am I just falling into some form of trap? Um, Amy's definitely convinced it's Justin at this point. I mean, last week it was Irene, so to me the the investigation doesn't seem to be going anywhere where Amy's concerned. But Cash, on the side, I don't think he's too impressed with Amy's investigation, is he? And there's a bit of an issue between the two of them as well, and she was sort of warning him off, and, you know, he he was sort of saying, Justin needs help, you're, you're, you're unethical in, in your approach. And they had this bit of an argument, and she was telling him to back off and all the rest of it. Um, you know, but he's smelling a rat with, with Dodgy Steve-O, isn't he? You know, and he... He sort of asks him for further questions later on down the line. Cash is on to something with, with Stephen there. Um, and I'm and I'm surprised Amy's not with him. But, I mean, it's a good sign that we've got a good copper in town, right? Who, you know, they've not got a good rep, some of these coppers, you know, in the past. So let's see what goes on, eh? Um, but, yeah, Stephen's acting really, really strange. Cash is on to him. And Amy's doing I don't know what. She's just an odd one. <laughs> Now, Chloe's looking remarkably well after her operation, her surgery, following her impalement from the explosion of the taco truck the other week. Um, she's home, she's recovering, and she's doing nice. Riders not done the insurance, you plonker. So I think that's the end of the uh, business entrepreneur extraordinaire duo. Um, you know, I think I think that's the end of that. And and it's nice to see Ryder actually getting his job back and being back with Mark in the insult. But as I said last week, balance is restored. Um, everything's everything is calm again in in Ryder's world. Um, you know, and and Mark as well. She's. But these scenes that she's had with Ryder this week, you know, they've been really great. Um, and it's just nice to have him back at, back at Salt. Um, but yeah, Chloe, Chloe doing well, she's back out. And she's having some lovely sort of light-hearted scenes with Ari and Mia regarding pregnancy and home life and, and all the rest of it. And um, that's just nice, calm, calm environment to, to sort of flick to after all the dark stuff going on in other characters' lives. Please share, like, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you need to do to this podcast so that you're reminded of future episodes, new ones every week uh, being published on your sort of, you know, your podcast platforms, Spotify, Google Podcasts and Apple. And um, make sure you don't miss a beat of my reviews of the latest episodes of Home and Away as they air on Channel 5. So Jasmine as well, well, can't not mention Jasmine this week. She woke up from her coma. Um, I think it's quite interesting. Chloe's sort of at home recuperating and getting on with life and she was in a worse way. Jasmine was sort of giving people, you know, first aid before anything happened to her during this explosion. But she seems to have come off worse off. She's woke up and she's got amnesia. (laughs) At one point during the week, it was a bit like, if somebody says... Dal, there's been an explosion. One more time. <laughs> I thought, oh god. Um, but yeah, no, she 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 took that really bad, didn't she? Eventually got an epilepsy diagnosis. So, have we got a bit more of a long term story coming here for Jasmine in an epilepsy storyline? I think that could be really interesting for her, actually. And well, you know, a different side to Jasmine. She's a real fit, um, young you know, character, she's into all that and, you know, life and fitness and she's running businesses and she works at the hospital. How will epilepsy influence her life now and change things for her? I'm quite looking forward to seeing that if that's the way that's going to unfold. Um, so, so yeah, watch this space. But th- thankfully she got that diagnosis and hopefully, and we've not been back to her yet, but hopefully she makes a nice speedy recovery soon and we'll see her back to her normal self. Um, Irene was a bit worried, wasn't she, at one point? Um... But no, she'll be back home in no time, I'm sure, um, and, and, and back to her old self. Now, Nick, trying to hide his affair from Sienna, 
that looks like the jig is probably up for him. Um, Allegra knows, Tane knows, too many people know now. And um, I'm really fed up of seeing Sienna's smirks from afar um, because she's playing a game and obviously she got Bella that job just to toy with Neek, didn't she? Um, you know, Tane's turned up at that really weird photo shoot where what on earth was Neek wearing? God. Um, you know, the less said the better. But, um, you know, yeah, I think I think we're on the cusp of him um, sort of maybe having to come clean. It's going, it's, going, it's going to really break Bella. Bella's going to be so embarrassed because she's also spending all this time with these people and they're all laughing at her behind her back or that's how she'll feel about it all. Um, and I, I, it's not really fair for him to drag this on. Um, for for all I say about this story, um, you know, Neek's a, Neek's a decent lad and he needs to do the right thing. And I think Tane will convince him to do that in the not too distant future. Um, what that means for Japan probably means no one's going. Um, wouldn't be unhappy if Sienna and Allegra and all the other fashion crew just bugger off to Japan and never come back, if I'm being honest. Emmett can stay. He's a nice lad, isn't he, Emmett? I think he'd go well with Mac, actually, but whether he'll stay around or not, he's he's a bit too lumbered in with the other fashionistas. So let them all go. I'm happy to sacrifice Emma if it means the rest are gone. Um, and hopefully things don't get too rough for Bella. Um, you know, I've come full circle with Bella a couple of times, you know, from hating her to loving her to hating her to loving her, but you can't deny that she's had a really bad life. And, you know, she just needs a nice boy and be happy. Um, you know, you see, but of course these things never run smooth in Summer Bay, do they? So there, hopefully, you know, she over time will come round and forgive him or, you know, realise she's better off and he's just happy either way. But yeah, this scene, which I'm assuming is, is imminent of him having to tell Bella is going to be, it's going to be a wrencher. Right, if you can't wait for the next episode, which will be with you next weekend, um, you know, as new episodes have aired, join us on so on Instagram and uh, Twitter, social media, um, at Coastal News Pod for discussion as the action unfolds during the week. Until then, I will be back next time. I'll speak to you next week. Bye bye.